great day to be a mountaineer. You know that one. That one felt good. It, uh, that's what our guys needed. You know, for that. You know, confidence to to start uh, snowballing in the right direction. It's one thing to get the, a top twenty-five win in Texas. It's another thing to to you know beat a Hall of Fame coach and top five program. You know. Uh, at home, so uh, hopefully that goes a long ways to our confidence in, in terms of moving forward and and uh, continuing the grind through the Big 12s because it really is a grind. So I told those guys before the game, you know, we had a great game plan. I thought we had a great game plan against Oklahoma. Um, I told them you might as well, you know, tear it up and start it on fire if if you don't out rebound them and and figure out a way to you know be neck and neck with them on the glass. And it, I said if we come in here. Minus 14, minus 15 on the glass. There's no chance we're winning. And uh, you know they, they they heard it loud and clear and out rebounded them by nine. So that was probably a, a huge difference in the game. Questions? So you continue with that a little bit rebounding. You've talked a lot about the problems there. So what was it that led to the plus nine? I think it was effort in a lot of ways. I mean it wasn't. You know, you know, you look at the. Sometimes it's a little bit skewed in terms of shooting percentages and who, who's, uh, you know, getting those rebounds. But we were neck and neck with shooting percentage, and we shot 52. They shot 53. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, you know we were we were quicker to the ball in a lot of cases. And if you look back to the Oklahoma game, it seems like they were quicker to everything uh, in that regard as well. So, um, life on the road in this league is can be a bear. And, and I know they, they had some travel issues or, or foresaw some travel issues, so they came in a day before, uh, and they were here all day yesterday. But, uh, uh, yeah, you know, some of that comes into play, even sitting around in the hotel all day on a, on a snowy day. So um, they probably got their rest, but uh, regardless, you know, I felt like we were, we, we were quicker to the ball in everything we did, and, and that can, in a game of inches, that can, that can be the difference. Coach, there were obviously a lot of plays at the end of the game that are going to make the headlines. But the first half kind of stands out to me in the fact that both teams just couldn't really stop each yeah. other. Uh, everyone's making, you know, fantastic shots, and the game's tied at halftime. I mean, what can you say about the, the, the first half, and then how much did it play into this game? Um, I'm not going to lie, I was very concerned. You know, the game plan was, you know, shore up the paint and, and do everything we can to – uh, keep Hunter Dickinson from from beating us, you know, as they just force it down low. You know, he ended up with 19 points. But as I said, you know, the one thing that I think KU challenged or, or is challenged with is they uh, all the guys or all the teams in the league they don't shoot it all that uh, well or they don't shoot a high volume of threes. So I said, let's make them let's make them shoot us out, out of this game. If they're going to win, they're going to have to shoot us out of it. And uh, so. Between Furphy and, and Timberlake, I mean, I think they had five threes between the two of them in the first half, and, and that ball kept, kept on uh, going down for them. So that was a bit concerning early. Uh, but consequently, on the other end, we were filling it up as well. So shots were falling for us, and, and so that was kind of a uh, – we were neck and neck. So, But going into halftime, you look at it, and it's 51 all, and, and we've had a lot of half times where we came out flat and, and didn't really perform in the second half. But – uh, you know, you give up 51 and a half. That's very concerning in, in terms of trying to win a, a tough, you know, Big 12 match at anywhere, whether it be on the road or at home. Josh, what's going? Oh, what's going through your mind when the students come out on the court? I didn't really think about it. it just it was, uh, you, you know, I was, uh, you know, I grew up in Kansas and. I was a Kansas State grad, and, and my entire I have a huge Catholic family, and that. 95% of people in my family go to Kansas State. So uh, I've watched Big 8 basketball to Big 12 basketball, and I've always, KU's been always, a, always been a dominant program. And uh, always respected that the year in, year out, that they were winning, winning big. And, and uh, so I think that the first thing that came to mind is, uh, it's, you know, I think about my dad. You know, my dad was a K State grad, and, and he didn't have a, much of a love affair for Kansas uh, by any means. And, and I lost him six and a half years ago, and I started thinking about him, to be honest with you, you know, how proud he'd have been. And, and uh, so I didn't think a lot about what the students were doing. I have a lot of respect for Coach Self, Hall of Fame coach, and 
their entire staff and their program and what they've done over the years and been able to accomplish over the years consistently uh, year in and year out. And um, for me, you know, that was the first thought that went through my head. And, and uh, you know, it's probably still hasn't sank in yet. What's your dad's name? Jim Eilert. Yep. Josh, there'd be a lot of coaches that would – Get away from what you did from your game plan after they go six for twelve from three and are you know staying in it like that. Do you all have any thought of that, or are you saying, hey, we've got to live and die with this? Um, you know, it's as long as we're neck and neck, I was I was okay with it. Um, if if it felt like it was starting to get out of hand, I probably made uh, some some adjustments. But I've seen KU and, and as quick as they can make a run on you, I tried to. You know, stop that when I felt like it was going in the wrong direction. Try to stop that quick, um, regardless of trying to. You know, a lot of times I, I probably get in a bad habit of trying to save too many f- timeouts, and you know I think I'm learning as I go to probably need to use those and fire those off early if I can stop those runs and stop that momentum. Coach, uh, so many disappointments in the last eight months. Is something like this something you'd like to savor a little bit, maybe a smidge longer because it's such a a, a high? Yeah, I'm gonna save her tonight. I promise you that. And savor it with my family, and and you know we've been through a lot. This this fan base has been through a lot, and and so it's it's just incredible that you know we were six and six and eleven going into this game, and we got twelve thousand plus in here supporting us. And um, yeah, I'm gonna savor it. But it's this league. You turn around and you gotta prepare for. A uh, good Central Florida team that, you know, KU. I mean, they went in there and had a 16-point lead and 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 uh, end up coming out of there with a loss. So uh, I'm gonna savor tonight, but tomorrow it's right back to it to to figure out a game plan for Central Florida because we turn around and leave on on Monday and play on Tuesday down in Orlando. Josh, so Jesse warms up. He's dressed. He didn't play him. I don't know if you ever even really sort of thought about it, but. Did you think about it, and how close is he to actually getting the game action? I think he's a lot closer than when I thought he was going to be. Um, I didn't know how the appointment was going to go, and how the the, the pictures and or whatever it may be, uh, the you know X-ray or MRI, whatever they did. I didn't know how it was going to come out, and he got a good good report, um, but he he was in a brace until then, so he hadn't had any movement. You now we threw him out in practice yesterday, and he was. Uh, you know, raring to go and raring to try it out and wants to do everything he can to help the team. And uh, we went a little bit of five on five and it, uh, it was a little bit tender when he started guarding the guys. So uh, we backed off real quick uh, to make sure that we don't, you know, set him backwards. We want to make sure that we have him moving forward and we don't need to have a setback. You, you weren't tempted today. That, that decision was already sort of uh, made. I mean, we had some conversations, uh, Jesse and I, and, and I said, what happens if we got two bigs in foul trouble and it's a tie ball game under five minutes? I mean, he's like, Coach, I'll do whatever it takes to, to, to win. I don't know I can, if he can be very effective with it, but uh, he's a team guy. He, he'll do anything for the team uh, to a fault. So, But at the end of the day, I have to do what's right by Jesse and make sure you know, we don't set him back in terms of his career, his long term. Um, you know, it's a bigger picture thing with him. Coach, would you agree that Sumnick outplayed Dickinson tonight? He he was more aggressive, you know. I, w- I would say tonight, yes, he uh, got the most of him. You know, I would have never thought, you know, Sumnick would have been, you know, to get 15 field goal attempts uh, by any means. But, uh, yeah, he was four offensive rebounds. He was active, and, and uh, I was hoping we could – put Hunter in every single ball screen we could possibly put him in, and that was kind of the game plan going into it because guys of that size and um, are, have a hard time, you know, out there on the floor guarding and, and showing and hedging. And so that was kind of the game plan. Let's let's make him – put him out there in space. And and Pat's, Pat's a little different in terms – he's not a traditional big, and that kind of worked in our favor in, in some some instances, especially on the offensive end. On the defensive end, certainly you got to – you get a mismatch down there, and we do everything we can to, to fight Hunter, and we had a game plan of, uh, of doubling him because he is such a special player in a low block. So, But, yeah, on the offensive end, I think uh, the game plan in terms of, of attacking him, uh, you know, putting him in those ball screens is the way to go. Hey, Josh, um, your, your lineups now, your starting lineups, are they just reflective of the matchups in the game? It's not like a perpetual – Yeah, this is – 
it's just going to be like I told this guy, Jojo, Jojo didn't do anything wrong by any means. He's, he's one of the best team guys we have. He, he's a program guy. And uh, I brought him in as we're game playing, and, and I said, Jojo, this might be uh, – this is probably not the best matchup since scenarios, and and uh, I, I'm going to start a cook. And, and I always try to have those conversations with him uh, before we go into game planning and practice, and, and he was 100% good with it. He said, do whatever we need to do to win. And uh, that's the type of guys you need um, in your program to where they don't hang their, hang their head and – and uh, you know, stew on something like that when it's really just a situational thing that we're, you know, I think we had a better uh, advantage with the size down low than than uh, having JoJo, which is kind of more of a three than he is a four. Um, going forward, then one of these days you get a six eleven guy back. You started your two centers today. Um, it just seems like this idea you have that could work. I mean, you have enough parts that you could mismatch, mismatch. You could match up. There's so many teams in the league too. They're not all going to be. The it, same. it helps us more than anything. It helps us putting people in their natural positions. Okay. You know, a, a cook and Pat are really natural fours. You know, Pat's got more strength to him, uh, more size that he can you know handle himself better defensively down low. Um, but you know, I think what Pat and I told Pat to be in a year when we never really got a backup five. I said uh, the opportunity for you. And I don't know that you wanted to hear it that bad, but the best opportunity for you is to buy in to be that backup five. And, uh, you know, we had Quinn, we had a, a Cook, and we had Pat. So all those guys are natural fours. So, you know, we didn't have that uh, that position, you know, it got so late in the situation we were in the summer that we never really shored up a backup five. So, um, you know, we had to go to him uh, with Jesse down, but we still had to figure out, even with Jesse in the rotation, try to figure out who was going to back him up. But Pat's done an incredible job, and he continues to build on that confidence each and every night and just getting better and better for us. And, and you know, some of that is just getting getting opportunity and taking advantage of the opportunity. He's 100%, 100% done that. Three guards pretty much every game, you think? You can't see yourself. You, I don't, you can't see yourself snapping out of three guards, like two-point guards. And I guess Rake wants more of like a two-three, but... Yeah, I mean, I I love having um, multiple point guards, you know, in at the same time. That's kind of why I went uh, away from Noah in the starting lineup and went with Kobe. Kobe's uh, got more size and, and probably better matchups for a lot of these guys defensively in this league. But to bring Noah off the bench where you can – I think I've talked about this before – he can handle the ball and and he can score the ball. So whether Ray gets two fouls or Kerr gets two fouls, you have an opportunity to shore that up uh, with with Noah. He's so versatile, and you know he didn't. I talked about it on the radio. He was 0 for five from the field, 17 minutes, uh, but he's plus 18. That's how much he affects the game uh, when he's out there. And uh, so you don't always have to you know score the ball to be effective, but. You know, he got five, what, four points, four rebounds, five points, four rebounds, um, or, or four points, four rebounds, and he drew five fouls. So um, he's six assists. So it's nice to have uh, him out on the floor and gives you that uh, versatility with his game. Coach, one more on the rebounding. It's obviously, you've talked about it since the beginning of the year. Uh, you've harped on it uh, after losses, and it's the reason for a lot of losses. Um, Tonight, you, you said it was more effort. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about the battles, offensive rebound late, uh, Quinn obviously on the free throw. Uh, th those are two huge plays. When you talk about the effort, uh, is, a lot of that, does it come because the other jersey says Kansas, or is there more to it than that? And, I mean, is there any story behind those rebounds? Because, you know, why tonight as opposed to not, you know, last week? Uh, I mean, I had a conversation, like I said, like, uh, the story I said about the game plan, you might as well tear it up and burn it, put it on fire if you don't have a rebound. The other thing I said is, like, they're one of the best uh, offensive transition teams. And, I, and we watched the Oklahoma tape, and, and we got guys in no man's land. Then we got guys that aren't getting back or crashing. So I said, make a decision. If you're not going to crash, you're not going to give us an extra possession, which nobody other than Pat in that game gave us uh, an offensive rebound. If you're going to do, well, get back. Don't just get caught up in no man's land to where they're going downhill and we didn't even try for the offensive rebound. So, I mean, I harped on it pretty pretty hardcore and it, it resonated with them. So uh, credit to them in, in terms of, uh, you know,
you know, positively reacting and, and taking that to heart.